The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, uh, good afternoon, folks. And uh, we are... In the midst of a start of the Jewish holiday of uh, Rosh Hashanah, which happens to be a new moon cycle, and uh, it's coming in pretty much uh, right at major support. I've posted the chart for the um, German DAX market because I happen to follow that in the overnight market. It trades extremely well off of Fibonacci numbers and patterns. And as you can see, we hit major uh, support there at the 61%, excuse me, the 61% uh, level just like we did uh, in the S&P and also with the, uh, with the Dow Jones. So we were due for a rally. New moons carry with them a really high probability of uh, an up move after a new moon, and this is what we are right now, and we're in a bull market. Uh, we certainly still are, of course, as Basil pointed out. And we did hold major support. Now, the question is, how much of a rally will we get from here? Uh, I don't know how much it's going to be, but uh, I've also posted into uh, Tiger TV the chart of the uh, Dow Jones transportation, uh, which shows that pattern that someone has called the, uh, the kiss of death pattern, which is, you know, frankly, uh, nothing more than the uh, expanding triangle, the T6 pattern that uh, Gartley had talked about in his book. But that, that's the one that really is, the, is important. But the one that is even more important than that, folks, uh, that you, just, you should never forget this one because this is the, this is the key to uh, all the things that I look at uh, in the market, and that is this New York Stock Exchange Index chart that uh, shows this uh, major divergence that we've had uh, over the last, uh, oh, well, it's been the last, uh, going back to June. So it's it's very interesting that we have this going on uh, again right now. Uh, just give me one second here. I want to update the um, the charts here because they haven't updated since. Uh, there we go. We should be okay. And you'll see that we almost made a perfect 61% retracement today in the New York Stock Exchange Index. So what you would be expecting here would to be a, a normal three- to five-day rally. That would fit in really nicely with the new moon, full moon cycle. Um, there's an old uh, adage in the market. Uh, you, it's, a, it's called the uh, it's a Jewish cycle, the Hebrew cycle, known as you buy on uh, Rosh Hashanah, which is the new moon today, and you sell on Yom Kippur, which happens to be, uh, I believe, in eight days, as I recall. It's in early October. The only reason I remember that so often is because uh, during the 1966 World Series, uh, Sandy Koufax pitching for the Dodgers, their star pitcher. Uh, he comes in on Friday, October the third. Uh, he came in and uh, he would not he would not uh, pitch on uh, Yom Kippur because of the high holy days. And no matter what the Dodgers tried to do to get him to change it, he stuck by his principles. And believe me, uh, that paid him great dividends because instead of the fans, you know, being really against him. Uh, even the people who were, you know, not Hebrew descent, which uh, there, that, that's a very small percentage, that everybody was, you know, backing him uh, for his his principles of not playing on the high holy day. So just bring a little history back uh, to that level. So we should see uh, a rally, uh, you know, uh, a pretty good uh, proportion here. But I will I will say, folks, that this market we've come down hard it's done everything we wanted to do we've got the short term cycle bottoming now but anytime we take out the lows that we made today uh... that's going to be extremely negative i don't know if it'll happen today tomorrow the next week whenever it's going to happen when we take that out that will signal to me that we're getting ready to have uh, another leg uh... you know to the downside the um, the vix index which i posted earlier you can see that it made a perfect a b c d pattern uh, as of yesterday's high, you know, and uh, it, it's just all fit together uh, for a potential rally uh, in stocks today. So we're at a point where it should be, you know, very, very interesting here to see if it's going to uh, hold up to this level. 
uh, and, and, and hold these levels where we are right now. And right now it looks like it is because the market's so very strong. But remember, in bear markets, these things can give up very, very easily. And uh, there's also the possibility that I'm, you know, full of bologna, which uh, if we took a vote here, I think the bologna sandwiches would win. But uh, one of these days, this thing will roll over. We got such tremendous divergence here in this New York Stock Exchange Index, which is the broad market, that it really deserves uh, our attention. Now, another one that I wanted to talk about, because Basil brought it up, and that is the, uh, the Russell. The Russell Index also has uh, come under a great deal of pressure because it has been, you know, far, far weaker also. And uh, we made a lower low today, and we actually went down and almost matched the August lows. Uh, that is incredibly uh, – well, that would be uh, – that would really be low compared to where the uh, – uh, where the uh, Dow Jones and the S&P are. But we've had a tremendous move down here uh, in the Russell Index. Uh, we got down to 110 and change. We rallied up about 1% uh, from that level right now. But uh, it, it also had a major divergence from the July highs that we had. And uh, it is by far the weakest of small caps, uh, as Basil has pointed out. And also, uh, you know, I have mentioned it too, not that uh, – not that the, the the two of us together means a whole lot, but uh, it's still very, very, uh, very, very important uh, in my opinion. We have a um, another situation where we have the um, uh, Dow Jones has had a you know pretty good rally here, and we've not been able to uh, uh, you know rally back very much. And we I think we're up about uh, how much are we up about a hundred points? Uh, not quite. Uh, only up 60. We had several days. We were down 100 points in the Dow. That's what I was looking for. We actually went went, went below the uh, chart, uh, below the, the key points that I wanted to see uh, in the Dow Jones. We got uh, right down to that, uh, that 71 uh, level, uh, excuse me, 17,100 level, and uh, we were bouncing back from that a little bit. So we, the quality of this rally uh, coming back is going to mean uh, a great deal. In my opinion, uh, with the uh, with the stock market, uh, the key the key folks. I, I really just uh, I had one person uh, send me an email that actually did the work and went back and looked at the divergence between the New York Stock Exchange and the uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average or the S and P to see when those divergence has happened. And he he told me he said I, I gave up. He said I went back as far as I could go, and he said I just got tired, and so he just couldn't find them. And we had two of them back to back. We had one in July, and we had another one in September. That that is uh, that is really a really a big thing, especially when we have these patterns completing up in here. Uh, we'll have to uh, you know see what uh, see what's going to happen, you know, from this level on. But watch the quality of the rally, and uh, we should get at least three to five days here if the market is really good. And uh, if it's not, it's going to close, uh, you know, either down on the day or below yesterday's low, and that will signal you know a move to the down downside, folks. Uh, there is a crash coming. I, I don't. I haven't. You know. I've always been bearish. Uh, you know. Since May, I've been looking for a major top. I've never mentioned the crash word very much. But this, this one, this time it's coming. I can smell it. Uh, and other people that have been around. Well, maybe that's. Maybe I haven't taken a shower today. I don't remember which it was. Anyway, I really think that it's coming. You just look at the uh, new highs to new lows, and all of these patterns completing. And it's a complacency that you see with the uh, margin debt at record high. The number of uh, the, the small number of bears only 13 percent. I think that's rather high, given the fact where the market is. Um, is really going to be uh, something to uh, uh, to watch. The thing to look for is you'll see a day. I don't know if it's going to be today, and frankly, I don't think it's going to be today because of this new moon cycle is such an important one that it should rally from this level. But it would be a day like you have a lower low. Uh, from a previous day and a higher high, you take out the highs from the previous days, much like we did in the NASDAQ. We haven't done that yet in the S&P. That's still a little ways away. And then for some reason in the last one or two hours of trading, the market for un unexplicable reason at all, no one, will, no one will know because no one knows. I mean, that's just the bottom line. The market will just give up and it'll just start cascading to the downside. And that's why, you know, bear markets are harder for most people to say uh, if that's going to case. The second key thing to look at that's been uh, pointed out 
uh, to me by several people in the Tiger Den, and there's some really smart dudes in there and dudettes, uh, is the fact that so far we've only had a 38% rally in the uh, Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average. We haven't even done that in the S&P yet, but the Dow Jones has been able to do that. The New York Stock Exchange Index hasn't even moved at all. I mean, it's just uh, basically, uh, you know, hasn't done anything at all. So it'll be that type of a day. In other words, it'll be up really big early in the morning, and then all of a sudden in the last uh, half of the day or whatever, whenever it starts to turn, it'll catch people by surprise, and it'll just be like a vacuum to the downside. And this is what happened uh, in 1987. Uh, it also happened again in uh, 2000, and also happened again in 2008. Uh, the 2008 one was brought on by the Bear Stearns and then later Lehman Brothers. But those were the types of moves where the market looked really good, and it was all kinds of great news. And you looked up, and you went to uh, over to Starbucks to have a coffee, and by the time you came back, you say, what the? And then you realize that something like that happened. So um, this is uh, this divergence that we've had is just uh, something that really, uh, really means to uh, to keep a uh, uh, an eye on it. And there's a, there's something that's screaming out there besides this divergence, folks, and that is the collapse in commodity prices that we've had. Uh, we've had a collapse in uh, you know crude oil. Or no, excuse me, not crude oil. We've had a, well, crude oil's down quite a bit. It's down from 107 to 92. But uh, you know, you look at the grains, wheat, corn, and beans. This is our major breadbasket stuff, and all that's it just keeps going lower and lower. And uh, we've had big breaks now in gold and silver, and they've held you know major support uh, at, down at that 1212 level in the silver, but it, get a gold and. 1746 in the silver, but they haven't rallied very much. You know, all we could get, you know, was a 40 cent rally in silver, and we've only been able to rally, you know, um, $25 in gold. Those are very, very uh, uh, insignificant rallies considering the fact that where we came out of these real strong, you know, cycle points. So it's important that we remember that these really are very, very important spots to uh, to really watch. Um, we're going to cover. Uh, we've got the break coming up here pretty soon, but today we've got to cover the uh, the currency markets because we've hit that uh, that level in the euro that is extremely important. Uh, that 127 90, 128 level. We're trading at 127 87 right now, and uh, the whole key to this might be the currency markets, like it was in 1987. Uh, that was the that was the trigger. That caused the uh, overall crash to the market that led to the you know the the formation of the uh, plunge protection team, which is basically the chairman of the Federal Reserve, the secretary of the treasurer, and I for, oh, I forget what the other one was. There were three of these dudes that uh, you know basically opened up the banking system so that we could uh, you know continue business. Okay, we're going to take a little break here. We got the Dow up about sixty. Uh, gold is uh, basically down a couple of bucks. And we've got the euros down about 40. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary Prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and we've had a request from one of our favorite people, Mr. Z in the uh, Tiger uh, Den. Uh, probably one of the better traders I've met in my 55-year history. And he asked to uh, bring a chart up of the 30-year Treasury bonds. And I thought what we would do is to show the 30-year Treasury bond chart along with the 10-year uh, note chart. Because you can see the 10-year note chart in the dark blue line is very, very weak going back over the past year. Uh, since last October, uh, the yields have been going up in the bond, in the notes, not by much, but now they started to accelerate a little bit. In other words, as notes go down, yields go up. Uh, but what's important about this, if you'll notice uh, what happened when the uh, Treasury bonds went up and made new highs in early September, the notes did not even come close to that. They could just barely make a 61% retracement and then sold off. This is, uh, this is the same type of divergence that we've seen with the New York Stock Exchange Index in July and also again in September and you saw what this meant now the note market and the uh, bond market is far far you know many times bigger than the stock market so this is even you know even more important the question that was posed to me is where would you like to be short treasury bonds uh, we've had a five-day rally here coming off of the 135 level we rallied about two points which is around two thousand dollars in bonds but I'd like to see them get up a little bit higher uh, preferably up around the uh, 139 level, which would be another couple points from where we are right now, and that could happen if we get a uh, flight to quality scenario of some kind. 
you know, that could, uh, you know, certainly, uh, you know, be in the cards uh, if it did that. But that 138, 139 level in Treasury bonds would be the area that I would really like to uh, to see if that's what's uh, where they were going to uh, to uh, if they were going to happen. At least happen from that uh, from that vantage point uh, from a technical basis. Uh, notes and bonds have been going down long term for quite some time it doesn't make any difference what the federal reserve says well it does make a difference to to, the, to them but not to us but uh the 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 price of these have have been going down uh for quite a bit i mean yields have been going higher i mean mortgages are going higher your car loans are still offering you know zero percent on some cars and stuff like that but but frankly most of them are uh you know under a great deal of pressure as far as uh, you know, the the mortgage rates going higher, and the other things doing the same. So you've got to be very, very uh, you know careful uh, at this level. So that's what we're looking at in the bonds and notes. I still think we could get a little bit of a rally here, but uh, we'll have to uh, wait and see. You know what's going to happen. Um, the question was posed to me uh, about the euro, and I think I should probably bring that into the uh, – give me a second, and I will put this up here, because we are at uh, the proverbial moment of truth here in the euro without any trouble at all here. I want to be able to get this in here if I can get this weekly chart up, and if it's doing correctly. Yeah, we are down here. As you can see here, we are uh, just a tad below the 61% uh, retracement on the euro. Uh, that came in at uh, – the 128 level, and uh, we've been down. This thing is so oversold, but it doesn't mean that it can't go lower. And if we close below the uh, the 127, uh, 80 level, uh, that will tell me that you know we're still going to keep going down, and we could easily make 125 in the euro. The dollar would be breaking out above the uh, 85 level, uh, and so that would be very very important. By the way, I wanted to mention that the contest that T contest that TFNN is having for the pre pre <laughs> For the free prizes, uh, that's a no-brainer, folks. You don't have to buy a lottery ticket. You can still win. So if you've got an interest, go to www.tfnn and look at the program that Tom uh, has put together for prizes and stuff. And, and there's a considerable amount, too. I mean, it's uh, it's really – and not only that, it's fun, and you get to compete with uh, other people. So that's pretty much a, a no-brainer. Okay, uh, basically what I'm looking at here is if that euro closes below 127 uh, 80. We're trading at 127.82 right now. That would tell me we're most probably getting ready, you know, to move uh, a little bit more uh, to the downside, uh, at least down to the the 125 level. This market has been incredibly bearish for a very long time. Uh, we reached the 140 level uh, earlier in the year, up around March, and we've come down 1,300 points. Uh, in the euro uh, on the way down. Uh, I am going to, uh, I know this is not the commodity show, but I am going to cover the uh, gold and silver here uh, after the break because uh, these are very important markets for the folks at TFNN and also here at uh, in Tucson, Arizona. By the way, uh, you're not going to believe this, but someone from London was joking about... Uh, uh, well, I'll tell you what happened, but I'll, I will tell you this when I get back. We got the Dow uh, up about uh, 57 and gold down about uh, $3. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and I was finishing up. I was talking to someone in the U.K. today, and uh, they were joking about living here in Tucson, the fact that it's in the middle of the desert and we're back in 100 years away from where they are in London. And he made the joke uh, that you probably still have hitching posts for your horses, and th that's not a joke. They still do that here in Tucson. And uh, not you don't see people on horseback anymore, but uh, they do have the post uh, still around the old uh, wrought iron post with the circles on the rings on them, where the people used to tie up their horses. Uh, Sarah and I were coming back from lunch yesterday, and we actually saw a stagecoach off the side of the road, uh, just like they have at Wells Fargo. That uh, was one of the dude ranches uh, not too far away, and uh, Sarah got a big kick out of that. As I as did I. I haven't seen one. In, uh, in quite some time, so it was very interesting. Okay, the chart that I posted in here, folks, is the uh, long-term weekly chart of the gold-silver index. And as you can see, we're making a triple bottom here. This is on a weekly basis. Uh, th this is incredibly important because these commodity pr prices have uh, totally collapsed in the grains. Uh, you know, they're, they're, in fact, worldwide they have. And we've had a big drop in the price of gasoline. I don't know if you folks are watching your gas pumps, but, uh, you know, we're getting gas right near 310 a gallon here in Tucson. It's not too far away. So that'll be a, you know, yearly low coming in. So it's, it's very interesting where we stand here with, uh, with all of this stuff that's, uh, that's really happening. That's deflationary, folks. That's the one thing that the Federal Reserve can't handle. They cannot handle deflation, and they put in, you know, a lot of money in this Q program, uh, 
QE programs, and if it doesn't start to, uh, it, it happened in stocks and in some other things, of course, real estate, but uh, the inflation has not happened uh, in other parts of the, of, the, of the economy. However, we have not seen any of it in the supermarkets or anything like that. You know, that might take a, a year or two to see any type of thing, and we're certainly not going to get any help uh, in the meat markets for at least another 8 to 12 months. I am almost sure we're going to have Rich Anderson on tomorrow from Anderson Capital Management to, to talk more about, you know, what we're seeing at here in the grain markets because we're into the harvest season now. Uh, we started the Equinox uh, here on Tuesday, uh, the first day uh, of autumn, and uh, that's when we start uh, to look to uh, uh, start to uh, harvest the corn, and uh, and then beans will come, you know, sometime in uh, late October as we uh, as we get into this level. Uh, at this time of the year. So that's uh, the other thing that we're looking at. Now, I wanted to put the uh, chart, the long-term weekly chart of uh, gold into the uh, Tiger Den so you can see that we did make the big ABCD pattern. We held and we actually rallied uh, $25. We got up to the 1237 level, and we needed it to get above 1245 to take out the previous week's high, but in, in fact it hasn't done that. And now what we've done is we've come down and we've tested the 786 again in gold down around this 1216 level. And if we close below 12, 1210 in the gold, uh, this is going to set up a potential uh, another leg down that means that we'll be looking towards the uh, 1197 in gold. So we still haven't you know, turned, uh, made the corner in, in, in the gold market for sure. We had the same thing uh, happen in the silver market. We'll take a a, a quick look at that. You'll see that we did make a little Gartley today. Uh, I'm going to do the. I'll do the 30 minute first because it shows the Gartley over the past. Uh, well, I thought it was going to do, but evidently the uh, drawing tool did not uh, did not work the way I wanted it. But I'll redo it and we'll put it in here so you'll be able to see it. Oh dear, I thought we we're going to be able to. Just bear with me here. We will hook this up and then we'll be ready to go. There we are. There we go. So we've so far we've made a, a nice Gartley with a little bit of a rally here in silver. hasn't met hasn't done very much at all. We just rallied up to a 61 percent retracement. So uh, we got a call from oh, Mr. Priceline is on the line. Charlie, are you there? Yes, I'm here. How you doing, Larry? I am good, my friend. Let me guess. Up or down today? Um, sideways. Oh, side. That's good. I mean, that's good. The market's not rallying in an up market, so that uh, that could be good. What's your question, my friend? I wanted to bring your attention. You said about prices coming down. Box yes. trucks. You know, box trucks. I don't know what that is. Trucks that move commodities. Okay. Oh, you, oh, you, oh, oh, okay. Yes. Prices of trucks that move commodities are going down like crazy. I mm -hmm. buy machinery, I ship it to Mexico, and I've noticed the price of trucks um, that normally would sell for 50000 bank repossesses it, you can get them now for ten. I'm not kidding you. you. you oh, I don't believe that. 80% off? They're used trucks that normally would carry a $50,000 price. They're selling ten, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 now. Wow, so and they're down I, quite a bit. Yeah, because the commodities that usually trucks move, smaller smaller guys, you know, the smaller box trucks, um, not the big ones, uh, they're they're falling by the wayside. The banks repossess them, and I'm not kidding you. I'm buying them now ten, twelve thousand dollars. We normally would be at fifty. Is this recently, or is this over a period of three or four months, or a year, or what yeah. is the time frame on this? This has been happening the last month. Okay, just the last month. That's very the interesting. The last month. And yeah. to me, I'm watching the other areas because I move machineries to Latin American countries. Cement plants that normally were $125,000, $75,000. I've even uh -huh. had a deal on a $40,000 plant. The guy's willing to give it away for $20,000. So the wow. price are, you know, you say deflation. I'm seeing it in equipment. And I've been doing this for more than 10 years, and I've never seen prices like this. That's and very strange. It is. You know, and I'm sitting right now at, you know, three or four trucks that I'm looking to buy very quickly from the banks, and they're talking eight, nine, ten thousand, 10000 And I'm like, wow. 
and it's and, and I've never seen it. And I have well, I, I shouldn't say I've seen it at the two thousand time when we had a lot of construction equipment that mm-hmm. was selling in California for junk prices going to Mexico. I mean, mm-hmm. we were buying things that were incredible, and I'm seeing it now in trucks and I'm, and I've and, and other machinery, but mostly box trucks. A beautiful Kenworth truck, like a T three hundred that sells mm-hmm. for fifty thousand, ten thousand. Mm-hmm. It's like it's flipping me out. You know, it's wow. like yeah, and you know, it's like wow. But coming back to Priceline, that's another one. I think um, I was just watching it, and I really called you about the prices of of trucks because commodities you're saying are going down, and to me, the equipment to move it is going down, and. That to me is, and, and, and I'm thinking the stock market will follow. And when you said before a crash, we're coming into some very big times. I feel, and and and, uh, and I'm seeing it, and uh, it's like wow. Well, well, it's interesting. I used to follow the uh, the Baltic index, the Baltic dry index, which was for shipping, but. That index has been, you know, saying that there's been a recession going on for the last five years. And that's primarily from what I understand that China has put so many ships out that it has diluted the market uh, quite a bit. And that's why the the Baltic index is supposedly not a good indicator of it. But the fact that here's someone like yourself, Charlie, that's talking about a day-to-day business where you're watching prices of something that you usually buy dropping by 30 or 40 percent, you know, that, that, that you have to ask the question, why are people willing to sell at those prices? Why do they need the money? Is it the fact that they're nothing to ship or are they, are they undercapitalized? But if it's, if it's, you know, all through the areas, and you're, you're back east somewhere, correct? I'm in Atlanta, and okay, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at trucks that are 2007. They're not very old trucks. 300,000 is not considered on a good Kenworth. It's not considered a lot of mileage. It's mm-hmm. you know it's good used equipment, and mm-hmm. to me, uh, seeing this drop is just totally. I'm like Sydney. I'm amazed. I'm just like wow. Yeah. And, and, you know, I'm saying to myself, you know, I used to be in the gold, and I used to buy a lot of gold, and I sold a lot of gold, and I sold through Tom, by the way, uh, quite a few pieces of, you know, one-ounce gold. And they may remember I come into the lobby, and I drop off some coins, and they used to give me cash for it, and me a check for it. And now I've shifted to equipment. I just looked. I went out of gold into equipment, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, I'll go with whatever is in low price and find a market away from the U.S. because there's lots of cash in Latin America like Honduras, Panama, Costa Rica, Ecuador. These are the kind of countries I deal with in Mexico. And this is this is to me like an opportunity of a lifetime. It's mm-hmm. like uh, – and, and some people say it's a crash, but I look at it from a different point of view. It's the time to buy. I mean, mm-hmm. you buy good value assets like a truck that you can give to a Latin American you know, driver who die for it. Mm-hmm. And he'll just go up and down picking up fruits in Costa Rica, shipping it to the duty-free zone in Panama and Cologne, puts him on a, on, a, on a ship. He gets paid immediately for it, and then he pays you, you know, a percentage of what he's making. And to me, nice mm-hmm. cash business. Well, Charlie, listen, if the stock market makes a new high, maybe I'll start driving trucks down to Mexico for you. <laughs> no, Larry, I doubt it. No, really, you could. We've been alerted here by someone in the Tiger Den that the truck stocks like PCAR, PCAR, and NAV, and CMI, uh, they've all, all been hit quite hard recently. So what you're seeing uh, in, the, in the, ma- the cash market is actually happening in the stock market to trucks also. Oh, that, that that's interesting that someone has yeah. then picked it up from that. Oh, there's field. some there's some smart people in that den. Let me tell you, they really are. I, they give me a lot of the information that I need, uh, you know, for the radio show here. So I I listen to what they're doing and I watch the charts that they put up and I I try to listen to Steve early in the morning, which I, that's my busiest time, and I get part of Basil's show, so I I get a lot of great information. There's very few places. Uh, in fact, I don't know any place where you can get the type of information that uh, they have at Tiger uh, Financial News Network. Uh, it's just got all kinds of great stuff with it, and it's just really uh, very, very valuable in my opinion. 
Mm-hmm. You know, just clicked into my head. I recently read about a large U.S. firm that that had these tractors that were not busy because they couldn't get workers. They claimed, mm-hmm. so they sold a lot of their tractors, and they said the reason we're doing poorly is because we can't get drivers. But now what I'm starting to realize, what someone in the den is saying, is that even the large firms that do the moving of commodities, whether it's gasoline and trucks, you know, or in commodities like coin, which ship them back and forth, or other commodities, these people are seeing a slowdown. Mm-hmm. And, it, and, it, and the equipment that's not needed is being sold or repossessed, and that's, mm. that's, that's incredible. Yeah, it so is. It certainly is. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, thank you for calling in, Charlie. I really appreciate it. But hopefully we'll get Priceline down to about $50 a share one of these days, and we'll celebrate with you. First 800. I'm watching the 800. First we get the 800. <laughs> I, like your, I like your style, Chief. I really do. You've got the... Okay. Uh, you got the kahunis to do this, my friend. If you can sell it at thirteen hundred, you can see eight hundred without any trouble in my book. Yeah, I see it lower, but I take it one step. Eight hundred is my next target. Okay, so I'll, 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 I'll go along with you on that one. Okay, and it's a great show you have. A great show. I really enjoy it. Well, thank you very much. I knew someone was out there listening, Charlie. So keep your radio going, okay? Okay. Take care. Bye. Okay. All right, folks, uh, I've already posted the chart of the transportation index, which we showed that uh, pattern as uh, someone has called the jaws of death. I'd never heard that pattern before, but I Googled it, and someone has actually put a name on it, so uh, we'll let them use that. But it's basically the T6 triangle. It's a very, very bearish pattern. And, you know, we've had these patterns before that have failed, but this time we've had so many of them, and then we had this major divergence. That's the... That's the real key, folks. Uh, if you don't do anything else, look at that divergence between the the real stock market, the New York Stock Exchange Index, and then look at that divergence, what it did with the Dow and with the S&P. The NASDAQ, you know, that's a, that's a tech thing. And, you know, these guys, uh, there's no tech bubble because this time it's different uh, because you have Google and you have um, Facebook and you have now we have uh, Alibaba. And, of course, everybody that's bought Alibaba on the first two days is now underwater, which is the same thing that happened with, uh, with Facebook. That doesn't mean it's not a great stock. It's just to mean that they hyped it, and uh, that's the way that it goes. You know, you have to buy them when they're crying and sell them when they're yelling. And those folks did a wonderful job of bringing that IPO out. They, they priced it. They cut back, uh, you know, the number of shares people could have. And then when the day came out, I think they did some – a uh, humongous amount, like they covered the whole float of the stock in the first day, as I recall. In other words, they could have turned everything over the first day uh, in the stock. It was over 200 million shares uh, in Alibaba, uh, as we, uh, as I recall. I know it was a huge amount, and it didn't open till 9:30, so it was a really a big thing, you know, that that really has happened uh, to there. Someone has asked a question about: Is there any downside uh, left in the grains? Well, hey, there was downside at uh, four dollars, three seventy-five, three fifty. We're now below three thirty in the December corn coming into harvest. And as Rich, Rich Anderson had mentioned to us a few weeks ago, there's no place to store it. So we'll have Rich on hopefully tomorrow. Okay, we've got a little break coming here. The Dow is uh, up about 80 points. Uh, gold's still down a few dollars. And the euro is trading at 127.83. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. 
visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex box spreads. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Up next, the Diagnostics Trading Hour with Daryl Martin here on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks, and I would like to uh, um, tomorrow's show for the commodity market. I'm hope I'm 100 percent, well, 99 percent sure that we're going to have Rich Anderson on. Uh, but tomorrow on the commodity show, I want to focus on some trading uh, ideas and rules or tenets, what you might uh, call them, uh, that really separates uh, winners from losers in our business. Because part of what we do here, uh, people are always concerned about how much money I'm going to make, how much money I'm going to make. And that is the absolute wrong way to look at uh, the way you invest in things. You should be looking at how much money you have at risk because uh, you never know how much money you're going to make on a trade. You never know whether you're going to be right or wrong until it's all over. So the only thing that you can really have any control over when you're doing your trading is the risk part of the risk-reward uh, equation. And you don't have to be right. Nine out of ten times, eight out of ten times, seven out of ten times, five out of ten times. You can be right three or four times or two times out of ten. And if you handle your losses correctly, 
you know, you're going to be uh, very, very successful uh, eventually down the road. But tomorrow I want to do uh, some time, uh, spend some time, probably half the show before we have Rich on, uh, going over some of the things that I firmly believe in. I have these on a painting uh, right behind me. It's a, a four by uh, four by four uh, oil painting. It was done by a very famous artist in California uh, back in 1977. And uh, her husband happened to be one of my accounts at Drexel, and it has all the rules that I uh, put up on the market there to, you know, to keep me uh, alive during most of this time that I've been uh, doing what I've been doing. So I do want to uh, tell you that I'm uh, really looking for much, much lower prices in stocks uh, down here, down the road. We're into September, finishing it up, and October is the next worst month. Uh, that's the month where we've had uh, our two of our greatest crashes, October of 87 and October of 1929. Um, there's some astrological things that could make this happen, of course, but you know I'm looking at the technical part of it. Uh, we've had the first part of the break right now. We're down uh, the the actually the Russell index, folks, is down more than eight percent off the high. I mean that's the biggest correction. We almost took out the August lows uh, earlier today, so that's uh, the one that is really uh, the worst. Uh, of any of the indices, so that would be the one you want to be looking to sell if you make these higher highs you know that we're that we 're looking at to, to see after we get these three and four day rallies uh, to come come into it. But when you start to see a vacuum form in some of these stocks, it looks like it just you know whoosh to the downside that 's telling you that the the buying that 's been supporting this market for the past uh, well especially the last five years, but since February the fourth. Uh, the markets had virtually no correction at all. This is one of the long, in fact, I think it is the longest period where the S and P has gone without a correction of more than 10 percent in uh, I think about a year and a half, and that is uh, an outlier event uh, to say the least. So those are the things that we're that we're watching um, in the market, and we'll keep you informed as we uh, go through uh, the show here. And uh, I hope you guys listen to TFNN, and uh, you ought to really take advantage of the contest that uh, that Tom and the TFNN folks have put together here because it's a lot of fun. They're giving quite a bit of money away. And when you get an Irish guy to give money away, you have found something, folks. That just never happens. And so we'll see that uh, what happens when the uh, money starts to be dealt out here in the next uh, week or so. But it's really a no-brainer. You can't miss. You just uh, have to get in and uh, do your own trading. And if you're good, you're going to make some money. If not, no one's going to know who you are, so how could you not lose? You can play the lottery without buying a ticket. That's the best thing in the world to do, so we'll watch that. We're going to keep an eye on this new moon today. Uh, we should not go below these lows for the next couple of days here that we've made today. Uh, we should rally into early next week, and then we'll see what happens. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.